Dear colleagues, uh, next speaker, uh, Andrei Vishnin, uh, uh, he will talk about uh, limbs, coxter groups, and volumes. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, that we meet all, all together here. And I would like to tell us about English. Okay. So I would like to tell something about the relation between the links, coxter groups, and their invariance, uh, the volumes. And I will present some very basic things, some modern results, and also some open uh, conjectures and problems. Let me start with very simple pictures. So I want you first the uh, image of, of the knot, what it means of the knot. We are by not uh, really in very not a circle in three dimensional sphere, three dimensional sphere, and there are various types of nodes. So there are family of torus nodes, pictures here in red, non-alternating, pictures in green, epithelial node, non vertebral and so on. So, so there are many different properties of nodes studied uh, by experts in knot theory. And for me, it's important that there are torus nodes and some other nodes. So red guys are not good for me. I prefer another one, which is colored without, without red color. And this picture is from molecular nodes. So it's very nice that people from applications also interested in knot theory. And usually they present very nice pictures. I will use some pictures from papers in biology. Also, we, we, we are talking about links. So we can see the few circles and embedded in the sphere uh, without the section. So you'll get some collection of curves, curves in the space. And some of them are very famous. They have special names, for example, hop link, link with two components, Varamian rings with three components, and so on. So you see there are different uh, components. Each component is a knot. So also these objects are very nice. And uh, this, this picture from the paper about molecular nanotechnology. Some people are very interested in these applications these days. So what I mean, what I would want to discuss, I would like to discuss the genetic structures related to nodes. So we can see the three-dimensional manifolds, which are complements of the node in this here. So you can see the node, it's a tabular neighborhood. After that we remove and we get a manifold with a boundary. We remove the boundary, so we get uh, and we get the interior of this manifold, and we are asking about geometric structure. And Thurston, um, uh, in his classical paper, the classical rich notice, proves the following result. So any node in three dimensional sphere is a one of three kinds. So it's a torus node, so it can be drawn on the surface of the torus, like in this picture, or satellite node. It's usually big, big pictures. I don't don't present it here. So you have a, a just imagine you have a, a knot drawn on the torus, and after that you link this torus in the space. So there is here a construction. Where there is the basic knot and he, his companion so that you get a satellite knot. And usually they don't have a good uh, geometric structure in the component. And all other are hyperbolic knots. And uh, I'm interested in hyperbolic knots, and I would like to tell something about hyperbolic. Space hyperbolic geometry in some basic results. So I suppose most of you know that hyperbolic space, which we call in Russia usually Lobachevsky space, is the following. So I'm just on direction three, so I present only three models, three dimensional models. So you can see this uh, set of points just up a half space in Euclidean space. So uh, let's use notation Z and T for uh, coordinates. To this point, and you can see this uh, uh, space is uh, uh, the length, ele length element, which is almost Euclidean, but it, it takes a third coordinate and divide by t square. So, so this uh, change uh, geometry uh, very, very, very much, and uh, we, we obtain uh, another geodetic line in the, another geodetic space, and so. Of them are presented here we, we, schematically. So you, you give the model lines are just vertical lines or uh, semicircles, and also uh, planes are just uh, the vertical semiplane and the uh, parts of the of the uh, surface of the, of the circle. And uh, since we have uh, 
metric, uh, and since we have um, uh, objects, uh, three dimensional here, uh, uh, so we can write uh, the element of the volume. So just standard, uh, standard technique of Riemann, very, very uh, geometry. So you know how to calculate volume. And what I need, I need as a boundary. So you can see the so-called sphere is infinity. So it will be just a boundary of our space. As you said, this is a basic public plane, a complexified by infinite point. So usually point is belongs to this boundary, call it I. There are many different uh, models of a boundary space. It's, uh, this model of uh, space, very useful for computation. But of course, topologically, it's just a different in, in a ball. Very specific. And uh, this picture from book of Bruno Martelli is uh, available in the archive. He still works in the book. Very nice book. If you like this challenge, okay, I recommend you this book in introduction to geometric topology by Bruno Martelli. Okay. And uh, since we have a space, we can uh, consider a group of isometry. And suppose we have a group G, which is a group of isometries of our body. Space, we assume that the group is discrete and we assume that they uh, act freely without fixed point. So we can assume the quotient space and the quotient space get automatically a discrete element structure which comes from the space and uh, we call the structure hyperbolic structure and we call this manifold hyperbolic manifold. And since we're interested in knots and links, so we can see the complement of the, of the knot or link. And if it is hyperbolic, so you say that not or linked to hyperbolic. So it means that you, in the complement, you can introduce a, a, a metric of a, a negative constant curvature and you work with, with, with many parts of the geometric part. And um, a, from a general point of view, what you have, you have a not complement. And, and from the other hand, you have this object as a, as a quotient space by action of some discrete group of isometry. And it is known how this group of isometries uh, looks. So the group of uh, architectural preserving isometries as in the past just is an object of PC to C. And the uh, action is uh, very, very natural. So we, we have uh, action of uh, uh, PC to C on the complete or the 10 complex plane by a fractional linear transformation. So you just consider extent. So we, present, we can present a point in the hyperbolic space by two by two coordinates, d, d and two, and uh, you can see, see the action. So if you can see the just the boundary of the hyperbolic space, you'll get extended complex plane, and uh, you'll get the usual action by linear person. So it's an extension in an analytical way. Also, uh, uh, there is an extension which is illustrated geometrically. So you know that any linear fraction transformation just a composition of few inversions in circles. But if you want to go to uh, dimension three, you can see not circles, but hemispheres based on these circles. And you can see the inversion in these hemispheres. So this analytical approach is uh, concise is general. So this is our object. So you can see the nodes as the quotient space by action of some discrete group of identities. And uh, this uh, geometry is very nice because of beautiful theorem proved by most of and other people proved some extensions. So usually called most of Prasad theorem. And it's true for any dimensional case. And if you end start from three, suppose you have two manifold and suppose uh, uh, both of them are hyperbolic or finite volume. And uh, this group G1 and G2, they appear as a fundamental group of your manifold. So if this group are isomorphic, then there is an isometry which is induced by the uh, point of homeomorphism. So if uh, too many too many thoughts is hyperbolic structure homeomorphic, they are isomorphic. So it's very very rigid property because of hyperbolic geometry. And uh, in our case, for for nodes, what we have, we can consider volumes of the node complement is hyperbolic structure. And this volume, just a number, it will be invariant of our nodes in the project. So if you have two, two nodes, which are embedded as a topic, so if you consider our structures, so you'll get the same. And also I want to uh, 
say something about how we recuperate volumes. It's not really not, not, not very simple. So you have a metric, and uh, usually people use function function which uh, known as the Lobachevsky function present here. It's kind of uh, still game function, and uh, I mark it in red because I will use it later in the next slides. So it's Lobachevsky function, and we know a lot about this function. You can find it in, in Wikipedia or in our found search mathematics. You can get many, many information. It's standard function you can calculate. So it's our starting point. And also some picture for your intuition. So we discussed what is a uh, geodetic. So how the simplex will look. So we have a boundary of the space, and we, have, we want to, to draw a simplex. So we take four, ver four vertices, our simplex, on the boundary of the over space. So let's ascend one of them to infinity. So three other A, B, C, this is the belong to complex plane. And our tetrahedra will look like this one. So some faces are just horizontal half, 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 half uh, planes, and some faces are just uh, part of the hemisphere. And uh, this situation when all vertices of our polyhedra belong to the boundary, belong to infinity. So we call this uh, vertex ideal. And we say that not a usual point which are below, which are inside of our geometry uh, on the boundary. So the kind of ideal objects. And uh, so generally, we will say later that our polyhedron is ideal if all vertices are ideal. And uh, there is a very nice formula uh, obtained by John Miller. You can find the volume of such a polyhedra, tetrahedra, in the following way. So such a tetrahedra is determined by three angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. So this plane angles in points A, B, C, that's in usual Euclidean geometry. And uh, since we are on Euclidean plane, so some of these angles are equal to pi. So we have alpha, beta, and gamma, three angles, which determine our polyhedra. And uh, volume can be found by the following way. So you take Lobachevsky function and you substitute this other end. So Lobachevsky function to create an alpha, so function in beta, and beta. Okay. And, uh, it can be proven that uh, there is a, you will get maximal volume. So it's just very simple. It depends on three on three alpha bits and gamma, but all of them equal, some of some of them equal to pi. Uh, so you just use some standard method to find the extreme of the function with the variables, kind of like a You find that much, you get maximal volume when all angles are pi over three and uh, value equal to one point one and so on. So so you know that up up to 15 digits, and uh, let's use approximation. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, so let's call this constant V3. This is just some number. We'll use it later. OK, and now let's go to, to the node. So one of the most famous examples in the node theory is so-called C gate node. It's also a node by 4-1. Four, 4 means uh, you can draw it with four crossings, like here. And um, the nice. The nice property you can obtain complement to this knot by gluing together two copies of ideal uh, regular tetrahedra. So you take a two tetrahedra. So you see there are some dots, uh, like those in the vertices. It's not, it means are they ideal? And you have arrows. So you glue the uh, faces of, the, of this uh, tetrahedra according to notations on. Ages according to this, according to this L. And uh, the first guy, the first person who observed it is Robert Riley, who was in 75. He investigated the following. So we, we have a node, so we have a node complement, and we can ask about the fundamental group of this complement. It does depend on saying geometry, just topologically. So we can find the presentation. So the fundamental group is keep generated, and there is one relation. It's generated anything. It's standard uh, trick how to find it. And uh, the question is by Rari is the following. Does this group have a faithful discrete uh, representation in PC2C? So if you know this group of isometries, if you if, I, if you will find a uh, faithful represent discrete representation, we, we can introduce geometric structure. And really he found it. So if you have A and B, the element of the fundamental groups, there are just some loops. 
So you can send A to a uh, matrix one, one, zero, minus omega one. There is omega just such element here. And you send B, say B to one, one, zero, one. So you'll get the phase of multiplication. So you can uh, realize these uh, loops, the fundamental groups, as isometries in this space. And you obtain your most complement is a geometric many, manifold, it's a volume structure. And you can find volume. Since you started from ideal regular digital hydra, so volume is double V3, like here. And uh, moreover, we can uh, study the group property, and uh, we, we can check the people found it many years ago, maybe beginning of 20th, 20th century. So this group, it's a group of PSL2 over a ring of integers of this quadratic structure. Okay, so this uh, geometric uh, structure obtained uh, by hand. So that was one of the most popular examples. And uh, with Evgeny Fomini, who is in this uh, room, and uh, some other courses, we extend this idea. So you consider it uh, this tetrahedra, ideal regular tetrahedra with all the other things I will And we constructed all possible manifolds can be obtained from finite number of copies of this tetrahedra. So the result is up to 25. Uh, copies in a rentable case and up to 21 copies in non rentable case for some trick how to generate it, how to distribute them. But it's not the subject for discussion today. So we, we can update a lot of the manifold without the property, which can be constructed uh, from ideal regular tetrahedra. Automatically, you get a whole structure from the future study. And uh, this is all coins of this uh, manifold are available in Russia. So, what I'm interested now. So let's consider this uh, tetrahedron. So we can we can discuss a group generated by reflections. So you have faces, you can consider reflections, and you have four faces. There will be four generators, and there will be relations as the following. So each generator for the two in this reflection, and also uh, if two if you have two faces which meet uh, in some common age, and we know that the other angles is pi over three. So the product of the corresponding generators will be free. This group, a poster group, is such a relation. And uh, all our all these manifolds are commensurable in this uh, poster group. And there are many interesting properties of these manifolds. For example, we can uh, draw some links. So some of these manifolds are link complement. And also we found uh, many nice examples, and this is just one family of examples. So there are links such that the complements can be obtained from 10 copies. And you see there are, there are different number of components. Uh, so, so the annotations L means a link, uh, number means number of uh, crossing in linear diagram, A or N means alternating or not alternating, and that's just moderate number. So there are many of the uh, link complements which are related to this poster group, which arise from ideal regular perihedra. And uh, now I want to consider another, another family, a family related to a right angle perihedra. And um, there are following definition, which was done by uh, Far, Parcel, and Kaufman. So suppose you have a link in three methods here. And we can see the, its complement, and we, we try to decompose it in some polyhedron. And uh, the introduce is not of right angle uh, link if you can decompose this complement into right angle. So, polyhedron, so all the other angles are pi over two. So, not necessarily one uh, kind of uh, polyhedron, uh, different kinds of polyhedra, but each of them are right angle. And uh, also, you know, such examples. And uh, we already saw these examples in the, in the slide. So one example is figure eight knot, so link with two components, and another example Borromean rings, link with three components. So we know for many years that, that, that you can obtain this ring complements starting from one or two, so one in the case of Whitehead, two in the case of Borromean rings, copies of right angle of the hidden. 
So you can have a hydrogen, combinatorically. So you can see the hydraulic space is all the other triangles pi over two. You cannot realize an equilibrium space with other triangles, but in hydraulic you can. So you have such examples. So they they call it the right angle. So it's a nice property because uh, you, if you have some deposition in parallel pieces, it's, it's very nice. And uh, just uh, for your intuition, the picture. So we again can see the right uh, half, half. We can see the half, half space model of a volume space. It's integer Gaussian numbers. So you can take point zero one uh, by one to zero. So only, uh, points on, on, on the plane and uh, the, the last uh, was just infinite. And uh, it is known that you can realize a complement of the white ring with hyperbolic manifold and for the other group of the white ring, just to have the face of this representation in the simple C. And uh, this octahedron uh, is uh, fundamental in respect to this group. And also we know that this is a group it's a group of for the 12 in the group of PC2 or, or the ring of Gaussian number. And so we are, we, are, we are interested in to, to understand which kind of rings we can obtain and what we can say about this link if they can be decomposed in right end. And I just briefly recall you what, what means the right hand focuser group. So suppose we have. Uh, Polyhedra is global is infinity, so ideal is all the other end pi with two so right angle polyhedra. And you can see the group generated by reflection, you know, by G. So it is generated by reflection, so it should be generated by the two. And since we have angle pi with two, that if you have two faces which are adjacent, so you can point your is coming. So it's very nice familiar group, considered cited by many people in different contexts. So, so for any random uh, polyhedra, we can pass it. And you can see this group. And uh, of course, this group has, has, a, has a torsion. So it doesn't act freely on the space. But we can uh, use uh, some technique to find a group of uh, finite index, which acts freely. By a simple theorem, we know such a group exists. So we can do it the following way. So you can consider a group with four elements, the two plus the two, so the trivial element, zero, zero, and three non trivial, zero, one, one, zero, and one, one. And you can consider the epimorphism of group directed by reflection, G, to this finite group. And uh, suppose this epimorphism has the following property. So let's just color faces in this uh, free element. And if you have a nice coloring of uh, regions in the sense of graph theory, here, so you, you can see you draw the faces, different power, and if two faces are adjacent, they have a different color. So you, you can uh, consider the color in, in two colors and three colors, and for each such possibility, you can consider the, 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 the kernel such epimorphism, and the theorem guarantees will be torsion free, so you'll get a three dimensional avoided plane. And if you use only two color, you'll get orientable. If you use three, so you get non orientable. And uh, in the case if you have orientable, you have exactly ring components. So, algebraically, you have uh, such extension, you have uh, that sequence. So, you're interested in group G, which is group of digital reflection, and gamma, which is a curve. And uh, just a simple example how it looks. So, let us just make a video of the hydron. So this one skeleton of the hydron, let us use two, two colors, uh, red and blue. You can see the color in each color. So according to above theorem, you can find the kernel, and uh, this kernel will build a fundamental group of some hyperbolic manifold. And it can be easy to see that uh, this manifold is exactly link complement. So the, the, what is the complement? Is a chain with Six components, and so let me start from the second uh, line of picture. So the blue in, in blue you have chain link, so you have six circles, link it uh, one by one, cyclically, 
And if you look on this kind of, on this picture, you can imagine the involution uh, around the uh, red dot. So you can use an inversion and you will get the same, the same link. So this is an inversion of the two. So let us consider the quotient of our link component by this inversion. And you will get uh, in the image the singular set which corresponds to the X of, of this inversion. And from each uh, red circle, you will get only one half. Since you can see the number by each color. And there is a numbering of components from one to six. And what, what is the uh, red semicircle in, in the middle picture? So it was a torus. And now you just take one half, and it was a line passing through the torus, the X of rotation. And Right here. So it was a torus, it was such a line. And you have only one half now. The image of this one. And now it is just the sphere, and there are uh, four points in each uh, appear in the intersection. And you can, can uh, shrink each sphere to the to, 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 to the vertex, it will get six, these six vertices. On the right picture, and the uh, red red uh, segments connect this. So you see that uh, you'll get combinatorically the exactly uh, the key. And this picture can point to the covering. So you have H3 portion by gamma, exactly how many four, the complement of the of this six uh, component link. After the next step is just portion uh, by uh, involution of order two. So it will be uh, all before, uh, which can be arranged. And after that, uh, again, one, one, uh, one, again, twofold covering. So orientable manifold, manifold which covering cover of monorail. So next to the So this is a general situation. You, you can start from arbitrary polyhedra. And you can reconstruct such family of things. And the conjecture uh, formulated by J.P. Park, Kaufman, and Parker, these people are working in New York. They know, know about these examples of links, and they ask it, uh, other right angled nodes. So, suppose you have a node, so just one component, can you decompose it in, in other polyhedra? Again, not necessarily all polyhedra are the same, different types of polyhedra, but suppose they attend. And uh, they conjectured uh, this fact, and it, it was checked for almost up to 11 crossings. It was checked by calculations of volumes. So we, we know volumes of a uh, huge family of, of nodes and rings, it can be tabulated. Using the uh, Jeffrey X program Snapia. And uh, from the other hand, you know how to create volume of rectangular polyhedra. We, we did it with uh, Andrei Gorov. So it's still open problem. Is this a right angle to most conjecture tool? So it's checked for small nodes, but for general cases, we need to meet maybe not, definitely we need another ideas and still all. So there is a reference to a paper of Chimpin Park of Mon Potter, which appeared in this year, just recently. In Jean of Algebraic Genetic Topology. Okay. So I will say something about the uh, ideal rectangular polyhedra now, if you try to decompose it in this subject. So uh, there is a theorem called by Andre in the 70s. He classified he gave a description of all acute angled uh, polyhedra in the Lobachevsky space. So the description is kind of linear equations and linear inequality depending on combinatorics of the polyhedra and this uh, conditions on the other angles. And in a very specific case, when we interest only in the right angle, it's only ideal. Andrei Sierm gives the following. 
So combinatorial polyhedra it means realization as ideal or assembled polyhedra in Lauchevsky space, if and only if it's uh, covalent. I mean, uh, the, such polyhedra that each vertex in each of them to exactly four edges. And uh, moreover, if you consider the surface of this polyhedra, so there are no three circles, so there are no closed curve which intercepts exactly three edges. And there are no non trivial four circles. So if there are some uh, closed curve on the surface of polyhedra, and if it intersects four edges, so this is just a curve around the vertex. So no non trivial. So it's very combinatorial conditions, it's, uh, they can, can be checked by computer. Uh, and moreover, what is important, the realization is unique up to isometry. And using uh, your theorem, which you already uh, mentioned in the first talk in this conference, you can find the following condition that the uh, double number of edges equals the four times uh, number of vertices. And tomorrow, if you denote by PK, PK number of kegenal faces, so you can easily find such kind of relation between uh, this uh, P, PK. So there are always at least eight uh, triangular faces. And if you have uh, big faces, so there just will be more triangles. And so minimal number is eight, when you have only triangle faces, so the minimal number of faces realized by octahedron. Which already mentioned. And let us consider the following family of uh, polyhedra. The first guy is a tachydron, and we go to generalize in the following way. We look at octahedron just on like um, antiprism, is the trigonal top and trigonal bottom, and after that, you just extend this uh, basis top and, uh, top, top and bottom, bottom uh, faces. So you can see the n banal and and so on. And this example of polyhedra, it's a nice example. It can be realized with all angles pi over two and with all uh, vertices at infinity. And volumes of this polyhedra were found in the Torsen and his lecture knowledges in 78. He uses this volume just uh, to find volumes of uh, some link components. And the formula de depending on n. And lambda is the same as the function which you discussed. And if you take n equal three, you'll get some number 3.606 and so on and so on. Some number, so it's just some, some constant. Let me denote this constant by V8. And since uh, combinatorics uh, was uh, very important, so it's natural to ask what you can say if you know some material properties of polyhedra. For example, if you, you have polyhedra, which is ideal or attended, what you can say if you know number of vertices. And the uh, first uh, result of this direction we obtained by Peter Atkinson, it was his PhD thesis. It was in 2009. It, he obtained the lower and up the bounds. So if you have a polyhedra, which is ideal or attended, with V vertices, so you have uh, low bound and upper bound, and the quality falls if and only if you have a hit. So V equals six. And uh, it was a paper, I mean, I can say it was very abstract in the, in the sense that nobody calculated volumes. It was just a bound, but the people didn't, didn't know the real uh, values of volumes. It was not clear, it is good uh, estimates or bad estimates. And we, we look at with Andrei Gorov and we, we observed that this estimate is not so nice. And uh, we have improved up bound. So if you start from nine vertices, so you, you can change the constant a little bit. You cannot uh, change the, the, the co 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 coefficient. Uh, uh, VA to the two, you can change on a constant for some example. So this uh, up bound and uh, really we calculated a lot of volumes. So we, we tabulated all these volumes. So the first column number of vertices. The next column is just number of polyhedra. 
in such number of ways, I mean, idle right angle. Next column, does how many different volumes? So you see sometimes, for example, if uh, the number is 72, you have uh, 72,000 of manifolds for polyhedra, but only 13,000 of different values. And uh, those are just minimal and maximal volumes in these families. Uh, so now it looks like, like, like the following. So points, just various of volumes, and uh, the lower bound, just a line, which is from Atkinson, and the upper bound is just a line from now joint uh, so if you know values up to up to 22 vertices and it's bounded from this. And uh, how we can construct such kind of polyhedra, you can do it uh, using a so called H twist twisting move, which is very combinatorial move. So suppose you have three edges going one by one. So you change the combinatorial of the polyhedra. You remove H E three E one and E three. You create new vertex and you obtain new new combinatorial structure, but still smaller. Uh, and as an example, you have antiprism, and you can apply for uh, this H uh, switching for E one and E three. You obtain new new polyhedra. We call it twisted antiprism. So it's another guy, but is, unfortunately we still can uh, calculate volume. So it was the original T-prism, so you know it's uh, by Thurston. So if you have twisted, you just add volume of the key. And uh, why these examples are important? Because, because, because of this uh, picture. So you, go, you, you you see points correspond to values of volumes, and in each column, there is a minimal volume, and it's always, and uh, anti prism or twisted anti -prism. So for, for this the family, just check it. So you have the following conjecture, which is called minimal volume conjecture. So if, if you consider minimal volume polyhedra, which is ideal rectangle with the vertices, so fix what? Fix column. No, fix it number of purchases. The column just to uh, how many how many fixed number of purchases? Yeah. So according to calculations, there is an anti prism or twisted anti -prism. And you have a conjecture this uh, true for all, uh, all families, so for, for any vertex, number of vertices, but not, not clear how to prove it. The calculations are boring and it's still open for. And there is a reference to our paper. Okay. Uh, so it's up to 22 verses. And the uh, question was what, what will be over there? And uh, we obtain it in a new upper bound in the paper joint with Stefan Alexander, Stefan and Andrea here. We give it talk later. The square paper for it on volumes of volume present for the you can find it in our hive. It is appear very soon in the board of mathematics. So, so we improve the upper bound for the big, very big number. And uh, also I want to discuss uh, the following topic. So it's a very famous third uh, problem by, by Gilbert about schizer congruence. So let's we say the topolyhedra are schizer congruence. If you cut both of them, or you can write count one, and uh, you can uh, reassemble it to another one. So in other words, you can cut both of them and find a number of pieces and they will be the same. So in the case of the Euclidean space, which is known from Mark then, so you need to compare volumes and then invariants. But in the case of hyperbolic uh, space, it's still open question, how about by Kisser's Congress polyhedra? And yeah, yeah, I just present here a picture uh, from our calculations. If, if you have uh, polyhedra point of the same of the same color, blue, so the, this polyhedra has the same volume. Sometimes they have different number of, uh, of uh, 
of your of your system. And for these guys, uh, you can check by hand if all of them are physics components. But if you increase the number of physics, you see there are thousands of uh, polyhedra with the same volume. It is not clear how, how, how to prove it. I mean, you still have open, open, open problem about physics congruence in hyperbolic space in, in general case, but even in, in particular case of high of polyhedra, also open problem. And uh, at the end of my talk, I would like to present some, some application of results from polyhedra to uh, links. So uh, as I mentioned before, if you have a chain link, the complement of the chain link can be constructed from four copies of antiprism. This example for n equals four. So you have eight component uh, chain link and the uh, antiprism is number four. And uh, antiprism, it's a right angle with ideal vertices. So it's a very nice polyhedra, it's very, very nice coxtrally. And uh, people studied uh, arithmeticity of these subgroups and arithmeticity of these ring components. Usually, if you would look at the arithmetic, it gives a very nice property about the commensurable class. Let's see, point to both nice array theorem. But uh, in the concept, context of uh, these Kleinian groups, uh, ethnicity is usually instigated for the so Bianchi group. So what is a Bianchi, uh, Bianchi group? It is paper for which Bianchi in the end of 19th century. He considers the following group, so a group of PC to C, uh, such that uh, the element of your matrix belongs to the family of So you, can, can, you take D, which is square free, and consider the extension of Q, the root of uh, minus D, and you can see it's a such group called Bianchi group. And he in his original paper, he presents some examples of link complements that pointed to some Bianchi groups. And um, generally, Cranian groups, non compact Cranian groups, or fine volume is called arithmetic. If up to conjugation, it is the commensurable with Bianchi. Considerable, so this group, two groups have a finite subgroup with them. So this property is uh, very nice. And in the case of the Coxter group, there is a very nice uh, criteria obtained by Inbert. So you just consider the Coxter group, you know, Coxter relation, and you check some properties of the correspondent uh, Coxter matrix. And uh, since you know how to construct lean complement for Coxter group, Coxter polyhedra, you can apply this technique. And the uh, criticity for this uh, chain link, CN, was tied by many authors independently. So by Norman Reed, by Meyer, and Cap Trap, and uh, finally by Ruth Kellerhaus, still not published. And uh, Ruth Kellerhaus, she demonstrated the following approach. To, instead of the lean complement, you can see the question about Coxter group. And just apply in the criteria to this. So this is a very particular family where we know uh, everything. So just uh, two chain links are this family are arithmetic, so the six and these eight components. And uh, talking about the polyhedra, so we have uh, octahedra, the next kind, so it's ordered by volumes. And uh, what you know from this uh, from applying in the criteria, you know that the octahedra is arithmetic. The next one, and if and the is number four is arithmetic, uh, one more arithmetic, one more arithmetic, and other unknown. So it's uh, still an open question. Of course, there are not unique, uh, not, not uh, particular examples of arithmetic group, groups. Of course, you can start from this group, you can consider five groups of the index, you'll get another polyhedra. So it will, it will be some family, definitely some families. And it's very interesting to find. Families of arithmetic ideal rectangle polyhedra, so not the rules of families of, of arithmetic Coxter group. And after that, you'll get application to, to the link theory, and you can obtain different properties about links or kind of you find trace here, but it's still be easy to find isomorphism. Uh, well, homeomorphism. So this question about, about arithmeticity is very important, and without. Case of link, we get right angles, we can 
reduces the expression to the case of Fox tables. And uh, one, one more application uh, of this construction. So, of, of course, you can uh, take not necessarily nice polyhedra, but some kind of uh, polyhedra obtained by H twisting. But nevertheless, you can obtain some link. And if you have say, and, uh, and the vertices, we will get n, n components. And uh, applying our result about the volume of ideal regular polyhedra, you can estimate volume, you can, or sometimes you can find volume. So you know volume for this link complement. And uh, you, uh, if you have a bound for the volume of polyhedra, you obtain bound for the volume of this link. And uh, after that, what we are doing, so you, you can apply then surgery. So automatically you get a uh, bound uh, for, for the uh, not complement or something that can be That's a problem. So it's a lot of uh, application of this results. And uh, I presented four problems. I, I will be very glad if you, some, some of you find these problems interesting, so please communicate with me. Some ideas or some issues. Thank you very much. Yes, I have a good question. Consider the task with hyperbolic manifold, the limit from finite number of uh, right angle, the yield right angle, the hidden. So I wonder if this decomposition coincides with. Uh, canonical Epstein Penny decomposition. I don't think so. Okay. So uh, we need to uh, subdivide this right angle polyhedric small polyhedric of the Epstein Penny completely. Yeah, uh, again, what, what do you want to subdivide? A manifold? Yeah, we have a manifold uh, with uh, decomposed into right angle hyperbolic. Ideal right angle for hyperbolic polyhedra as you uh, defined in, in your presentation. And uh, we have another, another canonical decomposition of a hyperbolic uh, cast like a manifold, yeah. which, which is which was defined by H and Penny. So does this uh, decomposition some, some, some kind somehow coincide for the correlation? Not there. Okay, for me, I have a new check. I wonder if there are some, some families, many folks for which this position is quite right, could be, could be a thing as, as one, as a subdivision of another. There are nice little examples of uh, composition when you use different kinds of polyhedra. And uh, the family. Where I say group as small not to So the city part of the group. Other questions?